Hello everyone, it's Kik here, and in today's episode, we are presenting new innovations from OpenAI, which caused Duolingo's stocks to plummet. The humanoid robot Unitry G1 excelled in acrobatics, nut cracking, toast frying, and other tasks. Tesla outperformed Mercedes-Benz in an autopilot competition. A new speed record for FPV drones at nearly 408 km h. A spider robot that will explore Mars and NASA showing what black holes look like from the inside. All this and much more right now. Let's go! Today's episode, we start with the presentation of OpenAI, which introduced the new model GPT-40, as well as a range of improvements for ChatGPT. Unlike all previous AI model releases, this time the company focused on enhancing the usability of its service for consumers. The letter O in the name of the new version of the chat reflects its main feature, omnichannel capability, i.e. the ability to freely process and provide a response in the form of text, audio, or image. Moreover, the new model is 50% cheaper and processes requests five times faster than its predecessor GPT-40. Turbo. This opens new opportunities for its commercial use. GPT-40 has new data analysis features when searching in real time on the internet, supporting work with APIs. During the demonstration of ChatGPT capabilities based on GPT-40 in real time, the progress of this model compared to the previous generation was clearly demonstrated. Company representatives conducted a live conversation with ChatGPT, also demonstrating photos and videos from the smartphone camera, addressing it with various requests. The AI managed to demonstrate almost instantaneous responses in voice form with the imitation of human emotions in various styles and even in different languages. Currently, the model works with 50 languages. Already, such a level of foreign language proficiency by GPT-40 gives a significant reason to consider the broad prospects of companies like Duolingo, whose entire business is built on the desire of people to overcome language barriers. After the presentation of the new product from OpenAI, Duolingo's stocks fell by 3.8% and continued to decline. The creators also showed a new chat GPT application for macOS, with which you can not only communicate with the voice assistant, but also show it information on the screen by pressing a certain combination of keys. During the presentation, the model not only recognized the code on the screen and told what it specifically does, but also explained the meaning of one of the functions. This works not only with programming. When GPT-40 was shown several graphs of temperatures by month, it was also able to analyze them, describe and answer clarifying questions. Meanwhile, another AI helped decipher the language of sperm whales. Researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and participants of the Conservation Initiative Project CT found that the clicks of sperm whales are not just sounds, but a kind of language. Series of clicks from sperm whales lasting less than two seconds act as codes, basic units of communication among cetaceans. It was previously known that these highly social mammals use unique sequences of clicks for identification, but for the first time, the combinatorial and context-dependent structure of their communication was demonstrated. Researchers analyzed vocalizations recorded from 60 sperm whales between 2005 and 2018. In the recordings, a total of 8709 different code signals were identified, which were classified according to 21 types determined in previous studies. Cetaceans use these code signals in two ways. Either they emit them in turn, or they overlay their vocalizations on each other during communication, creating patterns both at the level of individual signals and at the level of the entire chorus structure. In the meantime, the development of humanoids at the Chinese robotics company Unitree continues at a rapid pace. It seemed earlier that Unitree was focused on developing robot dogs, such as Go2 and B2. Their commercially available quadruped platforms have since formed the basis of some alarming applications, such as the flamethrower Thermonator we showed you or the platform for the M72 light anti-tank weapon rocket launcher. By the time H1 joined the race of humanoid robots, developments by Boston Dynamics, Figa, Sanctuary AI and Tesla were already underway. However, Unitree quickly caught up and has now introduced its second model, the Humanoid G1. While the price of H1 reached $90,000 with a wait of up to 10 years, G1 is much cheaper, starting at $16,000. Inspired by a somewhat eerie video of the new Atlas robot launch, Unitree decided to start demonstrating its latest Android in a similar way. The video begins with the robot lying down and looking like a victim of a robo-apocalypse, but then it suddenly rises to its feet, demonstrating extremely high joint mobility. In the video, G1 performs a series of household tasks tasks, cracking nuts, opening a bottle, flipping bread in a pan, wielding a hammer, and soldering. Unlike its predecessor H1, the G1 model looks much more complex. The robot is equipped with a helmeted head with a lit face, housing 3D LiDAR sensors and a depth camera. G1 also has humanoid robotic arms for various manipulations and three-fingered grips, which will be useful in households and workplaces. In addition, the robot is sturdy and withstands kicks and punches well. The robot will learn in a simulated environment using reinforcement learning and by copying the actions of other robots. Newly acquired skills, apparently, will be automatically downloaded to all humanoid robots over a wireless network. 
Let's move on. The Mercedes-Benz Drive Pilot Autonomous Driving System officially received an L3 level certificate, a very high rating for a driving assistance system. But as it turned out, its basic functions significantly lag behind Tesla's FSD Autopilot. This was confirmed by a comparative test of both technologies. A video published by the YouTube channel Whole Mars Catalog shows how the Mercedes-Benz system made a number of serious errors during testing. For example, it went off the road and missed a turn. Similar shortcomings had previously occurred in earlier versions of Tesla FSD but in the current FSD V12, according to the video sequence, they were resolved. During the experimental drive, the Mercedes-Benz driver had to take control of the vehicle 44 times to avoid an accident, while Tesla had this indicator equal to zero. It should be noted that the Mercedes-Benz system uses additional sensors, while Tesla relies only on cameras. By the way, Elon Musk, having seen this video, stated that Tesla is ahead of Mercedes-Benz in this respect by at least five years. Now let's take to the skies. Two aviation modeling enthusiasts from South Africa designed and launched an FPV drone that left the previous speed record holder, a device created by a team of professionals with Red Bull support, far behind. The record belongs to the Bell family father and son. Luke Bell, a photographer and blogger, had already been noticed in inventiveness. About a year ago, he won the GoPro contest by turning a camera into a tennis ball using a 3D printer. The pictures of a dog playing with the ball taken from an unusual angle pleased the jury and brought Bell $1 million in prize money. For the second project, Luke was joined by his son, Mike, who was responsible for testing the device. Together, they decided to make it into the Guinness Book of Records by breaking the previous speed record for UAVs set earlier in the year by the Dutch Drone Gods engineering team from the Netherlands. Their drone reached a maximum speed of 350 km h. During the demonstration, the Bell's Peregrine 2 drone into 100 meter dashes showed a maximum speed of 400 at a 80.23 km h and set a new world record. Moreover, it became the fastest drone with an onboard camera camera, delivering over 400 km h. And what would kick be without space? Researchers from Stanford University presented a robot for exploring complex Martian terrain. The development is in the form of a walking spider and is intended to assist other equipment, such as rovers and drones, in studying hard-to-reach places. ReachBot can imitate the movements of harvestmen or daddy longlegs spiders. Researchers were inspired by the grace of insects during movement. A similar technique will be used during the robot's expedition to Mars. Engineers used extendable limbs resembling legs in the construction of ReachBot to enable the robot to hold onto vertical surfaces, engineers employed three-fingered grips. ReachBot explores the terrain using a processor and a video surveillance camera. The system identifies the most suitable places for the robot to be placed and subsequent study of the surface of Mars. As part of the experiment, ReachBot was able to walk on walls and even pass through the ceiling. Now the robot is ready for the next tests in conditions with lava tubes in the vicinity of Fazgi Crater, located in the Mojave Desert. The visualization created by NASA specialists using computer modeling allows you to virtually plunge into the center of the event horizon, the point of no return for anyone who could potentially be inside a black hole. According to scientists, not only space but also time is distorted inside this structure. A series of videos once again proves Einstein's general theory of relativity. NASA also published videos with a 360-degree view. They allow viewers to closely examine the surroundings of the black hole and even see a map of the sky. The mass of such a black hole is 4.3 million times greater than the mass of the Sun. The event horizon of the celestial body reaches a length of 25 million kilometers, which is equivalent to one tall eight of the distance from Earth to the Sun. The black hole is surrounded by a flat, rotating cloud of hot glowing gas and photon rings circling around it one or more times. Initially, the camera is located at a distance of 640 million kilometers, but the black hole quickly fills the field of view of the viewer. As it approaches the disk of the celestial body, the photon rings and the night sky are increasingly distorted due to the curvature of space-time. In total, scientists generated 10 terabytes of data. Processing such a large amount of information took a supercomputer five days. An ordinary laptop would have taken more than 10 years to perform such a task. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated on high-tech news. Peace to your home.